hearts attuned to the divine will. I come on this day of victory to impart to you the essence of my heart's devotion to that will that has become the very momentum of my service to life here below, to the will of the Father and of the Son. I welcome you to my heart and I draw you near to the hour of your own victory of love. In commemoration of the Divine One who sent me forth in the beginning, in the great descent, so I am come to reinforce the ascent within each and every one of you in that reinforcement of holy purpose, won't you be seated? This is an age of many spirals converging. This is an age when the coils of consciousness that have not borne fruit must be cut off. Fortunate are those individuals for whom, when the judgment comes, there is the removal of the particular coils offensive to the divine light, and yet the retention of the integrity of the whole. You have come to pursue the divine wholeness and that for a momentous purpose. For we live in an hour when the experience of non-wholeness is very much to the fore in many life streams upon earth. Think then that the individual who declares wholeness as his individual declaration of independence must bear not one, but the collective, entire collective consciousness of non-wholeness of the planetary sphere of his evolution. The judgment of the Lord God then in sending to this earth souls who had abdicated their preeminent position in the divine whole is to go to that place of non-wholeness for the reinforcement of the experience of that which the free will has chosen. It is often the case that although individuals do not perceive in themselves the absence of the divine whole or the specific vibration of non-wholeness, they may often perceive it very clearly in others. There are many brands of non-wholeness upon earth, as many as there are labels on the tin cans in the grocery stores. Thus, although you may perceive the quality of non-wholeness in another, you may still not identify your own brand, though it is well known by them. The experience then in a common denominator of such a vibration of non-wholeness is that the entire collective consciousness of the people engaged in this aspect of their education might take in and perceive the ramifications where one aspect of the law is broken and non-wholeness appears, that all aspects of the law are compromised and the corrosion of the wholeness of the soul then continues, eroding away other areas of selfhood not originally intended by a single act, not in good conscience. 
Realize then that there is a collective destiny. It matters not into which hole the individual has fallen, for any hole results in a descent to a lower level of being. And therefore, although some take pride in their own state of sinful consciousness while pointing the finger at others, in reality, it is part of a common spectrum, a miasma of the unreal, and there is no sin that is sacred, and there is in reality none that is worse than any other, for when one is outside of God, one is simply outside of God. And that is the area of outer darkness, and that outer darkness happens to be the arena for life for many upon earth. Many individuals already dwell in outer darkness, and therefore we come to break the spell. You yourselves come into the light. You have found comfortability in the light through the violet flame. You have come into a point of reconciliation where you can abide in the state of the wholeness of your God-free being at the same time that you can tolerate until the supreme undoing and transmutation of an absence of wholeness. You can tolerate then some portions of darkness even while you are comfortable and increasingly more so in the light that descends in answer to your call. Many upon earth have not made this adjustment, nor are they capable of so doing. So fragmented is their state of consciousness that the light that would come upon them would only accelerate their darkness. And if the light that is in thee be darkness, as my son said, how great is that darkness. Indeed, that darkness is wont to become greater in the presence of the light in some whose commitment is not to the great God-free being of all. We come then in the flame of the Divine One, the flame of the Universal Mother. We come to contemplate life on earth, for the movement of life as the movement of the solar systems and the galaxies is an onrushing toward a cosmic purpose, the movement of the great in-breath of God and your own acceleration to the goal of the ascension. It is in this hour of the release of the light of my causal body that I may bequeath to you even a greater momentum of my own victory than ever before because of cosmic dispensations of light. And therefore, by transferring this to you, I may catch you up in the mantle of my own being and show you from the perspective of far-off worlds the ongoing nature of light and darkness upon earth. This I would do, for you are about to enter in to a journey to the inner retreat. You are about to confirm, as God has willed it, your own support of a place prepared, a most necessary place for all who would come apart and be separate from the downward spirals of darkness and enter in community through the universal church. That oneness that statehood of divine awareness that allows the collective of the saints upon earth to be the magnet for the drawing down of all that is required for the fulfillment of a golden age. Therefore, I turn your attention to this very subject of wholeness. For we gather around the great central sun we bow before the light of the Father, Mother, God. We are immersed in the light, and we determine, as it has ever been in the heart of the messenger, to lower this light into manifestation that souls might be saved. 
You have heard that the dispensation of the 1980s is a new consciousness, a new opportunity. Indeed, it is the opportunity for convergence of spheres and hence for the entering into the Guru Chila relationship of many hearts upon earth. Many disciples of the Universal Christ will come to know Lord Maitreya through his person and his teaching. Many will be caught up in his mantle, and this is the prophecy that comes forth from my heart, and it will not fail. I am the sponsoring light of Lord Maitreya, even as I am the sponsoring light of the Lord Jesus. I come with the mantle of the Cosmic Virgin, and I sponsor the third point in the triangle of Christhood, your own unfoldment of that perfect will to be that is the definition of Christhood. Perfect will to be in the wisdom of God, in the very love that expands and expounds upon that wisdom makes it intelligible and understandable to all lesser evolutions, is the bomb of Gilead of understanding passing through the sea of life, uniting hearts in a common wavelength of cosmic purpose. We see then almost a mad acceleration towards self-destruction simultaneously with a very intense search as well as a divine acceptance by many souls of the teachings of the Great White Brotherhood. It is the sign of many cycles turning. It is the sign of a certain confluence of cosmic forces from the great central sun and the converging of cosmic rays. Were you astronomers and astrologers of the New Age, I could give to you the mighty mathematical formula of many converging force fields, light waves, energies, bursting of stars, dying of stars, a whole galaxy of activity that is resonating the divine will of God from the great central sun and therefore having its effect on earth and her evolutions and on many others as well. The perception of infinity by the very crystal of the emerald ray enables one to be objective over many things and to be somewhat dispassionate when regarding the heavier conditions of karma that from time to time produce the swell and the turbulence in life. Blessed hearts, it may be said, and indeed it can be said, that you are not your karma. For in actuality you are light years removed from the point of origin of certain karmic conditions which you find now coming upon yourself. The very curve of space, the very configuration of the stars results in a crossing of pathways formerly trod. Thus, inasmuch as you are in an exalted state of consciousness in the glorification of Almighty God, you may look upon that karmic encounter, the knock at the door of being of an age-old debt and say, though it was my former self, it is not myself today. And therefore, in that objectivity, remove the greatest burden of all, sin the sense of sin, guilt and shame which automatically binds you to a former state no longer your own. Therefore, with Christly aplomb, let us move together with the momentum of this hour and of the great central sun magnet, let us together, I as your friend of light and mother of eternal cycles, let us move then against the returning emissaries of past sowings. Let us defeat the synthetic selves 
that are cut out in an infinite line of mechanization man, cut out paper that will be consumed by the eternal flame. I desire your recognition of how much greater is the God that you are this day than it was in the hours of the sowing of the seeds of les fleurs du mal. Blessed ones, all have sown the seeds of the flowers of evil, and yet one may pull them up when they return full circle in and among the weeds also sown in previous ages. My blessed hearts, the heart of God in you is real and greater in its beating and its rhythm than all of the discord and dissonance of the imitation of that great heartbeat. I cannot come with the gift of the emerald matrix or the emerald ray without an exposure. I must expose the truth of your own divine reality, but I may not walk away from you without exposing also crumbs of consciousness, though seemingly insignificant, that yet would deter you on the path if they were allowed to germinate and propagate. Thus there must also come the exposure of the lie of the antithesis of reality, and you who are the devotees of my heart. Welcome then the tearing of the veils of illusions, even when those illusions are tied to one's fondest beliefs and most sacred cows. Blessed hearts, even those institutions greatly revered, such as the Catholic Church itself, must come under the scrutiny of the heavenly octave, and one must not retain the idolatrous consciousness that merely because a dispensation was given, that therefore the human mind itself is invulnerable or cannot be then corroded and corrupted by vice entering therein. It is the church itself as the universal mystical body of God that stands in all ages, in all time and space, against which the gates of hell shall not prevail. But human institutions rise and fall. And when a human institution is no longer a vehicle for the ongoing cycles of the Eternal One, then we must find another chalice. Yea, not only find it, but raise it up, forge it, create it, and then fashioning the most noble crystal chalice, pour into it the new wine that will not be taken by the old bottles of an orthodoxy that has been corrupted by the machinations of those very fallen ones of whom you have spoken in this day. The entering in then into the company of the saints of this false doctrine and dogma must be perceived as not that which is the eternal hierarchy, nor the descent of the divine revelation, nor of the apostolic commission of my very own Son, but blessed hearts realize that it is upon the rock of the individual Christ self and not upon the flesh and blood consciousness of Peter or of his successor that the rising or the falling of the church must rest. Would then we place something so divine as the institution in heaven and on earth of the mystical body of God in the fragile chalice of the human will or human frailty? I tell you, nay, the rock of the church lives today in the hearts of those who are its two saints, both within and without its ranks, east and west, and even those who may be devotees of Zarathustra or of the Lord Confucius, for that which consists of the true and the faithful one of God is oneness with the Lord Christ, 
and that name, the name of the living Savior, as the rose by any other name that smells as sweet, must be perceived as something vastly more cosmic and universal, even than the mere manifestation of a single individual, even though that individual's name be Jesus. Understand that the Christ of Jesus is greater than the man or manifestation, but is the universal presence of the Son of God, his own divine identity, appearing and reappearing in the avatars of all ages. Understand it is the quality of devotion of the heart and the oneness and the penetration of that light that comprises the universal church. And therefore, let us be free, even of the idolatry of an institution, as some have entered into the idolatry of the Lord Christ, which is to say, looking after the very limited matrix of definitions prescribed by a doctrine that was not truly dictated by him nor received by the Holy Spirit, but rather construed in the fear of the loss of souls and even those appointed to be shepherds of my sheep. Therefore, must not contrive doctrines out of fear and justify then the end by the means or the means by the end. For these justifications then result in corruption, in self-deception, and ultimately the withdrawal of the mighty truth of reincarnation, of pre-existence, of the law of karma, and of the fall of the angels and the raising up of the saints whose hour is come to judge those very angels who have been their overlords for many, many ages. Therefore, let the church be understood as the white cube that is at the very heart and base of the threefold flame of life. Let the individual recognize himself as the living church, for not a cathedral, nor an institution, but a heart that beats, one with the heart of God. This is my definition of church, and this is the altar where I worship the one God, the altar of the heart that beats in the living sun in embodiment, the altar where the supreme sacrifice of self is day by day making its mark for the victory of the total body of God. Such a sacrifice is not too great for me to ask of you because it is not too great for you to make for you have already come this far to pursue that point of reality. You have already said, I will give all that I am to discover the grain of truth, the single grain, which when assimilated will result in my own instantaneous cosmic awareness of self. Yes, this grain of light is the point of seed atom of the soul. Yes, this point of light is available, and that sudden realization of inner godhood can come to you when the fetters of the outer coils and conditions of life are cast aside because you stand fearless, because you know the Lord thy God liveth because you know there is an inner design and matrix and there is a point of identity that will endure beyond the rise and fall of the Roman Empire and of Babylon the Great and of all of the fallen ones and the seed of the wicked, yet you know that the real identity of self within you shall endure and you cleave to the rock the rock that is higher than the eye that even affirms the rock. Most blessed hearts, as I am the bride of the Holy Spirit, forever infused with that light, so let yourself become the bride of the Lamb and let the purposes of God be made known. My beloved Raphael desires to impart to you each one a focus of the healing thought form, that it might be the magnet of your wholeness 
and be the answer to the prayer of the mother for the casting out of those demons of drugs and rock that invade the subconscious and nest there and are almost imperceptible to the outer consciousness merely because the outer consciousness is already colored and coated by their vibration. What will produce the divine innovation? What will produce it save? The grain of light, the seed of the word, the compressed essence of the sacred fire within you. How shall we proceed except to invoke and intercede for more and more that transfer of light that finally illumines the most darkened recesses of the subconscious, allowing you to see the enemy of thyself and with a sword of the spirit in hand to slay the antithesis of your most cherished dreams, virtues, loves, and joys of life. Our beloved El Moria, whose heart has been so fired with the will of God in his service to the Lord Jesus Christ, is one with me as we seek to forge in you the diamond heart of God's will. This diamond heart, blessed ones, contains the sacred fire, the divine plan, not only of your own wholeness and mission, but of every life stream connected to your heart in the mandala of the victory. You see, the assignment of God is not so simple as to stop with your own self-mastery, lest this become a preoccupation reinforcing pride and even spiritual ambition. But the assignment of our God is for the mandala of souls of light comprising a community all its own. Thus, you are responsive and responsible to all who are tied to you, whose filigree light passes through your heart. Threads of sacred fire interconnecting hearts through the heart of Shambhala, Lord Gautama, the Lord of the world. Thus, when you think of all of the facets of a carved diamond heart and the many reflections and rainbow rays that appear, consider the joy of moving freely, interacting with all who are a part of this mandala of the Lord Jesus Christ and all whom he represents in the hierarchy of celestial hosts to the throne of the Ancient of Days. Consider then the work of Lord Gautama in transferring to the inner retreat that flame. Consider why, therefore, his heart and meditation is upon the blueprint of all souls of light. It is for the victory of the whole and no other victory will suffice for him, for beloved Kuan Yin, and for those of us who tarry with earth and her evolutions, waiting not for one soul, but for many souls, many sons, to come into captivity of this diamond matrix of God's will. Oh, it is a love that is intense, this love for the divine will of God, for the beauty, the compassion, the passion of angels, for that mighty blueprint of life. But, beloved hearts, the love for it must catch fire in your heart because there is a part of it in your heart 
that ignites the full fervor of the surging of your devotion to serve night and day for the externalization of that will and every component of its externalization is a moment of the ecstasy of God's love bursting as the joy of crystallization, the joy of bringing forth in this dimension all that is the within. And the joy comes in the very experiencing of life itself. And it comes in knowing that the kingdom, that specific consciousness of God, coming out of heaven to earth, is being realized. And with each successive building block of life and all of the components of the scene of which you are a part, there is the inner knowledge that the victory is nigh. For you have known from the beginning that with the crystallization and the physical octave, then and only then would the hour of your own victory come, even the very same victory that is the path of the ascension. All of us who have walked that path have rejoiced that our footsteps and the fiery coil of ascension's flame might be to all following after a greater and greater magnet unto the sun. O light of the sun, of each one's, O I am presence. Light of the sun of being. Now let thy light rays unveil the conditions of Europe, Paris, London, Berlin, Madrid, Amsterdam. Let there be the revelation in Rome and Vienna, Belgrade, on and on. Let there be the revelation of conditions in Moscow, the cities, of the plains and of the steppes, cities of South America and Africa, and those individuals dwelling as nomads, those who know the desert, the barren hills, those who are retiring in their villages. Let there be a transfer to these souls of light, of an awareness of world pain, of the intrigue continuing of the fallen ones and their gods, of the bliss of the saints, even in the hour of their crucifixion. All things occur simultaneously, but the point of light, the point of acceleration, is the point of the heart of the messenger and those who are the chilas of the will of God. The point of the heart that we have set as the orifice for the descent of light and the ascent. Ascending through the heart of your own messenger, you find the doors of life opening unto my own heart. You find our oneness. You find our love spanning the octaves. And as you have heard, the crucifixion of the mother in the heart of her chilas is an ongoing reality, for only thus can the soul endure the crucifixion with the mother of the world upon the cross that is the lawful initiation of life in this hour. Blessed ones, I come also to reveal a mystery and an ongoing initiation of the messenger to you, that you might realize that many initiations that occur in her life, interacting with the hierarchs, of the ascended hosts are not made known to you. But this one we shall tell, for it involves your own path. It is the implanting of the very being of the guru in embodiment, not only in the hearts of the chilas, as has already occurred, but in this hour, in the very temples of the fallen ones. This is the commemoration of the descent into hell. And where is hell but in the state of consciousness of the one who has fallen the farthest from the point of divine reality? And what is the purpose of our entering in there in these depths of vibration? Why, beloved hearts, you might have guessed it is there 
for the call of the judgment itself that there might be an acceleration of the judgment and that self-denial of the great God self now becomes the denial of the presence of the guru herself representing Sanat Kumara and therefore a hastening of that very karmic condition which results in the final judgment and the second death. For as we have seen and contemplated through the eyes of Alpha and Omega, we see as you also must realize that there must come a cutting off of these coils of consciousness that have a way of enduring even beyond the judgment itself for the very laws of physicality and incarnation. There must then be the cutting off and the binding of the tears into bundles. We of the ascended Archei and Archangels perform our work with our legions and the one embodied performs the service of the spoken word and the call. Therefore, every resonating judgment call from the heart of the Chila, who is the Chila of the will of God in the mother, therefore will resound in the heart of the messenger as the very electronic presence of the messenger is now in this hour inserted in the very temples of those who are the serpents, the seed of the wicked, the watchers and their godless creation. And do you know, beloved hearts, that presence in miniature form of the full electronic electronic presence of the messenger within that heart center of these fallen ones becomes an instantaneous irritant. Yea, more than an irritant, it is the presence of the Lord Christ against whom they rebelled long, long ago. And this is the emerald matrix that must come to those who have denied the emerald word of the Son of God. And therefore the matrix itself is for the cancelling out of all that would deny it. For he that would deny me before men, him will I deny before my father. And therefore there is already the attempt of the fallen ones to compensate and cover over for this mighty electronic presence. But it cannot be so. And the more they will cover over as the action of the oyster covering over the sand, the more they will find the causal body of the messenger growing within them until there will become then and there a displacement of the anti-God and the full manifestation of the victory of God himself. Do you see, blessed ones, how scientific is the formula of God as his descent into earth is that great determination that you heard expressed even in 1976 in celebration of the 4th of July. The word went forth, God has decided to save the earth. And he has decided to save it through you. Each and every one of you then becomes a component for this grand divine design that engages unreality and transforms it into reality. And all that has passed since that hour in dispensations of light and all of the teaching given forth is an implementation of that word. The implementation of that word is for the victory. And these are among the many mysteries of God that must come to pass ere the swallowing up of death by eternal life and of darkness by light and of the casting of death and hell into the lake of fire. All of this we are about. We are one and you are not separate from us, nor is any one of you separate from the beating heart of the messenger. You must see that this existence of non-separation is the strength and the original fiat of God. For God has never declared himself independent of you, and yet some of you have declared yourselves independent of him. Separatists have you been, but I am for the union. I am for that union with Archangel Michael. I am for the divine union of the Lamb with the souls of God. And I affirm it, and I adorn life where I am, and I stand where you are, and I increase by a little bit the blessing I have imparted to you with that holy oil last evening. I take it. I intensify it, and by that slight intensification, now another layer of substance is consumed. And it is one of the veils that is hid from you 
your divine reality. Of all gifts of my heart that I could give on this hour of the celebration of my ascent to the throne of God, it is this one, the consuming of a veil of Maya, that you might see God as he is and know me as I am, your friend of light. In the victory of the flame of Shambhala, I await you at the inner retreat.